today we're actually going to go over the turbo charge solar kiln after we've used it for a little over two years uh, we're just going to go over is exactly how the turbo charge works what we did what we didn't do what we make out of it so let's see if this whole thing is worth it jay i'm curious Okay, I'm thinking like most of you who have built a uh, solar kiln or a kiln have seen the Virginia Tech uh, style kilns. And that's exactly how we tried to build it over here. But I got so anxious the second the building was up, it was raining, we put lumber in here right away. And I actually never got to insulate any of my walls. I know it might be tough to see. I have Visqueen everywhere to keep the moisture out. It was my intention to actually uh, insulate it, but uh, we just keep using it. That's what happens. The other thing that we have is we have an 18 foot door. And again, it was my intention like everybody else to build the doors, put in the special vents like that. <laughs> Honestly, right away, I bought this, let's say like tent style canvas or like a circus style canvas, thick oiled. And we've actually put this up for the two and a half years that we used it. We've never changed it, but uh, it actually has gaps into it. There's no insulation. I'm sure if you really wanted to, you could stack uh, styrofoam insulation here, close off your door. This just makes it bigger for me. And quite honestly, we have not had the time to uh, build these doors. We're, we're lacking doors everywhere, to be honest <laughs> with you. I haven't even gotten to the side door over there. It's still plastic. <laughs> so, uh, just like everybody else, we're using the same exact design that goes on. Me, I went through a million fans, okay? Even this up here, I went, hey, let's go solar, let's go solar. <laughs> uh, yeah, that thing barely works. So what I actually found, honestly, these $20, box fans i mean these have been running for a year and a half non-stop bought them at the thrift store for five dollars so the heat hasn't bothered them and uh honestly that's my cheap way out but you got to keep fans running this thing needs to have airflow in it to actually make it work i know tucked off here in the back i don't even know if i can get in there jay jay's gonna pan in key thing to one of these solar kilns is we do have a commercial dehumidifier in there and it's running constantly. So you can actually look right here on the ground of the water of that that's pumping out. And this stuff has been in here for a couple of weeks. So we are stacked full. I mean, I'm 10 foot wide, 21 foot long. So we can actually hold quite a bit of board feet. Now I know we just recently stacked and put this stuff in here, but um, it's got a couple more weeks to go. And from what we found out is that we do, we do everything, we air dry everything outside. Get rid of the original moisture from the wood. Don't just run in here, stack your freshly cut wood in there. This thing is gonna be like a greenhouse moisture box. Pump out as much as you can. We stack ours, what do we say, Jay? At least a month, if not two, outside. Then we bring them in. Four weeks, five weeks, this whole stack from end to end will be ready to go. So if you plan ahead, you're really good. Nothing more to say about that. Except we need three more kilns. <laughs> we do need three more kilns. I mean, honestly, you go to a professional kiln place, you can pump this out in a week or so. You know, I'm looking into it myself, but quite honestly, I might just build us another solar kiln because we have so much that the rotation that I'm gonna save myself two weeks and $60,000. I don't know, that's what I'm thinking. I know in certain parts of the country, uh, maybe you don't get as much sun as we do down here in Tennessee. I know in parts of Arizona, you get plenty of sun, but you wanna know in the winter time, or if you wanna actually sterilize your wood 
and you're wondering how do I heat this thing? I mean, do I have to buy a gas unit? Do I gotta buy a wood-fired unit? No, you don't, okay? Um, and honestly, in the summertime, I only run this to sterilize my wood. When I put it in here, I can get this cranked up. I can easily get this room to 160 degrees as long as it's not 14 below, okay? So in the wintertime, we're able to run this thing 24-7, and it'll actually keep it heated during the evening because, yeah, I neglected on the insulation. So there is a variation in the solar kiln, and there always is, which helps the wood, in my mind, because they say that it actually relaxes a little bit at night instead of just being pumped dry. So maybe the slow dry is a little better. But as you keep using this unit, I mean, you don't need to go and buy anything other than a couple of 55 gallon drums, maybe some smoke pipe. And actually, I just bought a cheap kit off Amazon. They have them all over the place for the old double barrels that everybody uses. Everybody who's a sawyer that has, we just have what? Everywhere. I'm burning it over there for no money, for no reason. It actually is a lot of work. I'm burning more wood than I can actually run through my turbo kiln <laughs> here. So real simple, guys, is that we're buying a smoke kit where they get the double. I'm actually using the one piece from the bottom here and the other piece to connect my uh, other 55-gallon drum. And instead of being together, and instead of, I heard a lot of comments, why is the fireplace not inside there warming it up? Because it'd be way, 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 way too hot. So that's not going to work. So we're actually using the second barrel away from the main heat. And yes, we're losing heat outside. We stand around, we get our sandwiches warm in the winter time, but uh, you got free wood. I don't know how much heat I'm burning over there for nothing, but I don't mind me getting rid of my waste material. Now this actually is just a heat exchanger. You probably could do it in certain circumstances with just enough chimney pipe. The heat that's going to radiate off this is not going to be burning hot heat. And it's actually not going to be wet heat like sometimes a fireplace has. It's going to help dry the situation. So this can is just getting warm. You could actually, I want to say, you can't keep your hand there. But me, I can touch it. But you want to be able to have an even heat throwing through here. So during the winter time or when I'm using this, I'll have another fan in the back blowing it so everything is going in circular motion and running. You have to keep the heat somewhat away from your wood. I mean, if you're burning a giant fireplace, you might be able to put a little bit of wood at the end, but not use the whole unit. Yes, this side of the wood might dry a little faster, be a little warmer, but this heat exchanger it's really a game changer for us, definitely in the winter time. And definitely getting rid of our scraps. Relaxed wood, huh? It relaxes, the wood relaxes. It does. So it's like has a cocktail, chills out. You know after a hard day, Jay, <laughs> in the chair, who knows what he's... <laughs> That's awesome. It's true. <laughs> That's cool. A lot of control. Sometimes we do, Jay. We burn a lot, and yeah. everybody's asked me, how do you clean this thing? How do you clean this thing? And yeah, you can see we probably got overzealous and used unseasoned wood, and we had a little bit more moisture. So who knows what got thrown in there, Jay? I don't know. <laughs> One of your sandwiches could have done that. <laughs> Mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. Simply, guys, every time we do a rotation and we really run in the fireplace, me, I just pop these couple of screws off. Put a bucket under here. Yeah, it's a dirty job. Clean out all the creosote that's in the pipe because it does build up because you're getting uh, less heat through here and everything is hanging up. Me, I hung my can upside down. So if I need to clean out the can, which I'm sure it actually probably has stuff in it right now, you just unscrew this little cap. You're able to get it out with the top open, bottom open, and that's how I keep that clean. We don't want to actually uh, set the kiln on fire, Jack, like would, the tables. That would be bad. Would <laughs> the be bad. tables. Yeah. This might burn a little bit. This is dried wood now, <laughs> fellas. I can tell you the oak flooring that I put in here was pushed together tight. This stuff is so, so dry. 
it probably just would implode in fire. Yeah, you can see right through there. <laughs> <laughs> Two guys, chimney sweeps. Nice. I know it might be slightly easier to take your doors, pop it open. Us, Jay just gets to unbolt the tarp system here. <laughs> and uh, we're able to check the way we pallet everything in here. Now I know. I don't have one of these $600 checkers here. Um, I don't know how much this one was, but it was not $600. And I was actually concerned at one point where I actually took my hickory flooring that my guy was reading at 6% two and a half hours away to a kiln to get done. And when he read it with his $600 one, he told me that his kiln would actually add moisture to what I brought him. So I took it home, four hour ride, probably should have bought the $600 one, but I'm still using this and I check it. <laughs> the way we stack this stuff, this is my white oak decking, which I'm checking. It's a little bit thicker. The remainder of all the stacks and stuff in here, poplar. So I'm able to reach in at least check. Ooh, turned it off. Hopefully my battery didn't die. I don't think so. Able to check. Uh, running 13, so I'll be able to check a bunch of pieces. And you want to check in the middle of your stack. I come out here, 10 and change. This is where you're gonna get less airflow. So I'm checking inside. When this stuff reaches eight, nine percent, I know that this whole kiln is done and dry and this stuff will be bone dry i mean i'd have to take some stuff off also you see the ends it's just reading nothing so this wood has no water and you know how i know it works jay <laughs> i do it all the time holy Ooh, smokes way up there. i've been drinking today way up there. 51 percent. <laughs> usually i'm 33. <laughs> you are usually 33. i'm a lot of water today jay you're full of it <laughs> I know this thing would actually run more efficiently if we'd had the insulation and real doors were put on. But really, the, look at the situation that we're in. If I put out a five foot door, I'm limited. That's just my fault. I don't want to cut that tree. But I'm <laughs> limited to come in with my forklift. I mean, it's very obvious to see we're loading this with a forklift. We're not stickering it as we go. So uh, honestly, without the doors, that's another main reason why I didn't do it. Be a hassle for us. Have to kill that tree, Jay. I don't kill the tree, Dan. We so take... We're only shade in the summer. <laughs> That's of... right. <laughs> About 6 p.m. That's right. The wax canvas door works really well, though. So the question is, after two years, is it worth it to build the solar kiln? And I honestly, I told you, I didn't even get to finish it. I don't have any insulation. My tarp is up here. The vents didn't get put in because I figured the tarp has some air leakage out of it. That's my venting material. But I'm able to pump a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of material throughout the year here. So I'm definitely considering building us another one. Uh, maybe improvise it a little bit, but that's how the old turbocharged solar kiln works in my mind, Jay. It works well, Dan. It does work well. Anybody looking to do it, I think it's worth the time and it's a fun project. Nothing else becomes a shed. And it looks nice to see the wood stacked in there. We got a lot of wood to pump through there. We do. <laughs> <laughs>